Hi friends, this is Denaro Research and welcome to my new video series on cryptocurrency arbitrage. This video will be more theoretical, today I'll give you a brief overview of some arbitrage methods and in the upcoming videos we'll create arbitrage bot. But firstly let's define what arbitrage is. Arbitrage is buying and selling some asset, normally it happens simultaneously, in order to profit from price difference. In this video I will cover three arbitrage methods. The first method has no name, at least it's unknown for me, so let it call simple arbitrage. The second one is triangular arbitrage and the third one and the last one in this video is statistical arbitrage. The first two methods, simple and triangular arbitrage, are a little bit common at some extent. Both of them require high-speed network with low latency. They both have almost zero level risk and generate small profit. Statistical arbitrage is absolutely different from the first two methods. It is more complex. It actually has evolved out of pair trading strategy. Statistical arbitrage requires a lot of scientific uh, computation and it has higher risk but can generate much higher profit. Let's look at these methods in details and begin with simple arbitrage. Let's assume that we have accounts on two exchanges, exchange 1 and exchange 2. In real life these exchanges may be Binance, Bitfinex, Polonix, Bittrex and so on. It doesn't matter at the moment. But both of these exchanges have common pair. For our example let it be XRP against Bitcoin. Each exchange has its own order book. And on the top of this order book we have highest bid price, which is the highest price traders willing to pay for buying XRP and lowest ask price, which is the price, uh, the lowest price at which trader wants to sell the XRP. Same for the second exchange. Of course, bid price on the one exchange should not be equal to bid price on the second exchange. And the same for asks. They may be different. This happens because cryptocurrency markets are very illiquid and we frequently observe different prices on different exchanges, especially comparing Korean exchanges with their kimchi premium and any other exchange. But this inefficiency creates huge opportunity for pricing arbitrage. Now let's look how it works. When we want to buy some XRP, we typically buy at market price. That means that we will pay the lowest ask price. And the opposite when we sell some XRP, we pay highest bid price. But look what happens. In periods of high volatility, which are very frequent in cryptocurrency markets, prices on different exchanges do not move simultaneously. Like in this example, XRP price on exchange 2 is going up, while XRP price on exchange 1 remains the same. But what is more importantly, that highest bid value on exchange 2 is higher now than lowest ask value on exchange 1. That is the moment to arbitrage Ripple. What should we do now? Actually, we simply buy Ripple at exchange 1, where we pay lowest ask price, send Ripples to exchange 2 and sell them at highest bid price. This difference is actually our profit. But in reality, it's not that simple. Profit in this case is very small, so typically is, it's about 1%. But from this 1% we have to deduct taker fees on both exchanges, which is approximately 0.1 or 0.2%, and of course withdrawal fee. And that significantly reduces our profit. 
Secondly, arbitrage opportunity has a very, very short time frame. Typically, it lasts for less than a second, after which prices on exchange 1 may start to grow and on the exchange 2 may drop a little. That means that it is very difficult for human trader to seize this opportunity and perform arbitrage. And finally, cryptocurrency withdrawal from the exchange takes time. You should wait for approval email, enter Google Authenticator code, uh, waiting for your request processing and so on. And all that leads to the loss of arbitrage opportunity. In order to avoid all these difficulties, simple arbitrage is performed by trading bots, which monitor both exchanges, actually they monitor other books for arbitrage opportunities. In order to avoid withdrawal fees and actually delays caused by transferring XRPs or any other cryptocurrency from one exchange to another, trader keeps equal, equal amounts of ripples and bitcoins on both exchanges, exchange 1 and exchange 2. And this is the downside of simple arbitrage. Because if you want to trade multiple pairs, that means you have to store a lot of money on both exchanges and periodically perform rebalancing. In the upcoming videos, I will show you how to create simple arbitrage trading bot. But now let's look at another arbitrage method, which is triangular arbitrage. Triangular arbitrage needs only one exchange, and that is why it requires far less money than simple arbitrage. The idea of triangular arbitrage is very simple. Bot monitors three other books. That is why it is called triangular arbitrage. In our example, it is XRP BTC, XRP Ethereum, and Ethereum to Bitcoin. And bot calculates and waits for condition when we can sell bitcoins to buy XRPs, sell XRPs in order to get Ethereums, and sell Ethereums in order to get back to bitcoins. And the amount of bitcoins we had on step 3 is higher after deduction of all uh, fees than initial amount of bitcoins we had. Unlike simple arbitrage where trades can be done simultaneously, so what can buy on the one exchange and sell on the another simultaneously. In case of triangular arbitrage, trades are performed sequentially, and that causes additional delay, which may lead to loss of arbitrage opportunity. Now let's look at statistical arbitrage. Because of its complexity, I will not dive deep in this video, because statistical arbitrage requires its own video series, and probably someday I'll make this video series. But today I'll just give you a brief overview on what is statistical arbitrage. The idea of statistical arbitrage is built on mean reversion of co-integrated pairs. So firstly, let's try to figure out which pairs can be co-integrated. Firstly, we need to split all possible tradable pairs into groups or clusters by the utility function. So we can create several groups, like the first one may be anonymous transactions coins, which may be Monero, Zcash, and some other. Decentralized applications like Ethereum, Lisk, Neo, Stratis, and so on and decentralized storage, which can be comprised of Sciacoin, storage, and Filecoin, and so on. Now, inside of each group, we need to run cointegration tests. Well, you need to understand that cointegration has nothing in common with correlation. Pairs may be correlated, but not cointegrated, and they may be cointegrated and not correlated, but they also can be cointegrated and correlated in the same time. If test gives us result that is at least below than 0.05, that gives us some confidence that these pairs can be cointegrated. 
Now we need to calculate the spread. It is actually simply difference between prices of pair 1 and pair 2 multiplied by some coefficient. This coefficient beta can be calculated through the regression of prices pair 1 and pair 2. And the spread is the price of synthetic pair, so let it, let it call it XMR BTC, ZEG BTC. The next step is to get this score. This score will give us trade signal, whether we need to buy or sell, and which pair we need to buy and sell. This can be easily done through multiplication of mean value of the spread by standard deviation of the spread and deduction of the resulting amount from the spread value. And finally, when this score is below some threshold value, in our example is minus 2, We'll open a long position, for instance, on ZEC, and we'll short Monero. If this score is above some threshold value, let it be 2, we'll do the opposite. We'll loan Monero and short Zcash. And finally, we'll close long and short position simultaneously once this score value goes back to 0. As you see, we do not have any stop losses here. So how do we manage risk? Well, for risk management in statistical arbitrage, we use hedging. We hedge long position with short position. If Monero and Zcash are co-integrated, when we lose money on Monero, we'll gain profit on Zcash. Statistical arbitrage is very interesting method. Despite its complexity, it generates much higher returns than simple arbitrage or triangular. Statistical arbitrage is widely used on the stock market, but probably less on crypto or forex. Well, in this video I gave you a brief overview of some arbitrage methods, and beginning of the next video we will build the arbitrage bot that will trade on two exchanges, Polonix and Bitfinex. Thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want more videos, and leave your questions in the comment section below. Bye!